wanted to ask you what General von Gerstorf in his memoirs, which is in German, not in English, mentions he attended a conference where Himmler addressed 250 generals and admirals of the Wehrmacht in May 1944, and Himmler spoke about the extermination of the Jews, and von Gerstorf was in the back of the auditorium. You'll find it in his memoirs. Uh, he said he only counted seven or eight generals and admirals who didn't applaud Himmler. I'm, don't, I'm wondering if you're familiar with your, the com military conference and what's your reaction to it? Thank you. What conference was that? The Vansay conference? Uh, no, in Poznan in May 1944. Poznan conference? Oh, uh, Himmler addressed 250. October 43. Oh, but Himmler addressed 250 generals and admirals of the Wehrmacht. It's mentioned in von Gerstorf's memoirs. It's in German. Uh, that he was at the conference and Himmler spoke about the extermination of the Jews and a number of, most of the generals and admirals there applauded. And I wonder what your reaction to that is. Thank you. Well, what one has to keep in mind is that the mass killing, just, that just as I mentioned earlier, this mass slaughter and letting die of Soviet POWs, the, the mass killing of Jews is not taking place on the moon or on some other continent. It is taking place with the support, participation, and observation of the military. The, the first systematic killing of Jews because they are Jews is done by the German army in Serbia starting in the summer in late spring, early summer of 1941. The killing in the East is done with the support and occasional participation and certainly always the knowledge of the military. There is an incident here which in certain ways I would suggest to you, uh, to put it in very specific terms, uh, may be very revealing about attitudes and perceptions. The largest single massacre that the Germans uh, perpetrate in World War II is in the vicinity of Kiev in the fall of 1941 when something over 30,000 Jews are murdered. This is in the area of the German Sixth Army. The commander of the German Sixth Army is a field marshal by the name of Reichenau, who issues an explanation of this to the troops, that this is the just punishment. Gerechte Sühne. Now, when, when 10,000 children are murdered, the issue of what, what's the just punishment for what they could have done is something you'll have to ask somebody else to explain to you. As army commander, he sends a copy of his explanation to his superior, the army group commander, who at the time we're talking about uh, is the senior officer of the German army, Field Marshal von Rundstedt. Rundstedt reads this document and thinks it's excellent and decides to have copies made and sent to all the other commanders of armies un, in his army group and the army group rear area, in other words, all the people under his command, the southern part of the Eastern Front. Okay? This is what he thinks is right, just punishment. Two things about this go beyond this and I think give us some insight. Rundstedt is a witness at the main trial, international trial at Nuremberg. And he is asked about this document. And what he is shown is the order of his subordinate commander Reichenau. And he pretends and says under oath, he's never heard of it. German top level officers were very much accustomed to oath-breaking, except for the man who was bribing them. That oath they kept, but all the others they regularly broke. The other side of this whole issue is, why does 
Reishi now, in the first place, issue an explanation. German field marshals were not normally in the habit of explaining themselves to the troops. I cannot prove the answer, but I have a very good idea of what happened. One of the top officers in 6th Army said to the field marshal, there are questions raised by officers and men. What on earth is going on here? We had better explain it. And it's under those circumstances that Reichenau asks one of his officers to do a little drafting, and then he polishes it up, and out of it comes uh, this horrendous document. But it gives us, I believe, insight in two directions. A leadership that has become totally corrupt, totally corrupt, that sees the killing of one and two and three year olds as just punishment, and then lies about it under oath on the one hand. And in my opinion, at least, some German officers and soldiers who saw and heard of this and said, what on earth is going on here? But a leadership that tells them this is the right thing to do. And it is in this context, I would suggest, that you have a total uh, alteration or reversal of values that starts in 1918 and continues to 1945 of people who have lost their moral and ethical moorings. And in the case of Rundstedt, I will just go take a minute for one further aspect which I personally find very revealing since he's the senior officer in the German army, he's at the top of the rank list. In the fall of 1944, after the 20th of July effort of some decent people to kill Hitler and take over the government, those who are suspected, accused, or imagined to be in any way involved are to be kicked out of the military and turned over to the hangman. A special court is set up as senior officer of the German military, Rundstedt presides. The chief of staff of the German army by this time, Guderian, sits on it, and then a third general, uh, not well known, Short is the third. These three are judges. While they are serving as judges, two of them are regularly accepting bribes from Hitler the accused are not allowed to appear, and they are not allowed to have representation. This is a court, in other words, in which two of the judges are taking bribes from one side, and the other side is not allowed to make an appearance. The official name of this judicial farce is Ehrenhof der Deutschen Wehrmacht, Court of Honor of the German Armed Forces. It is an interesting concept of honor, isn't it? Thank you.